Hello everyone. This video will go over the policy table in the board game Hegemony. It is an update from a previous video that I did that clarifies some of the things that might have been confusing or I might have, might have um, said a little incorrectly. So I want to make sure I have this as accurate as possible to make sure there's as little confusion as possible. Additionally, I'll give some strategies that each of the factions might consider when looking at each of the seven policies. The first policy is fiscal policy, and this deals with how the government goes about spending money and particularly how much they can take out in loans. So well, let's look at each part of this. So the top is the amount of companies that the state has under each policy. When we start the game, we start at C, and the state has three companies to start. So the three companies are represented right here. And they have six more that as the game goes on, they could potentially get. In a two-player or a three-player game, if you were to move this policy, say to B, you would flip the next three cards and the state would have to pay for those companies. So they'd have to pay, in this case, 20, 40, 60 for those three companies. If you were playing a four-player game, the state would get to choose three of the six companies that are here and decide which ones they wanted to unveil and pay for them at that point. On the flip side, if we were at B and we had six companies and you had to take the ones that were flipped over and they had to go down to three, they would be selling these companies and making the money back that they had paid for them. So they would get more money into their treasury. And same deal with nine. If you move to A, they would have nine companies. They have to, the state have to pay for those companies, but they would get uh, money if the policy moves to the right. The second piece of fiscal policy is the bottom part. And what this is saying is if the state has one loan, so they can potentially get loans if they run out of money in the state treasury throughout the game, if they have to take out a loan, if you get to the IMF intervention check, they would have to um, go into the IMF intervention even if they had taken one loan. Now with that, if they get a loan and they're able to pay off that loan before IMF intervention check happens, then they're okay. But even having one loan puts them into IMF intervention. Whereas if you're at B and C, two loans put them, puts them into IMF intervention. So they can have one loan and be okay, but having that second one creates problems, okay? So what are the practical implications for the different factions for the first policy? Well, first of all, for all of the different factions, uh, they have to keep in mind that if they squeeze the state too hard and cause IMF intervention, that's going to impact everybody. All of the policies change if that's the case, and all of the proposals that uh, each of the factions have in a given turn are going to be turned away. For the working class, having more companies available to work at is a good thing for them uh, because that gives them options and uh, they can make better money uh, and not help the uh, the uh, the other two factions, the either the uh, middle class or the capitalist class, if they are working for the state, and if uh, the consequently on the other side, if the policy is more toward the neoliberalism side with C, the, um, the capitalist class will get the benefit of having workers work for them more because they will have fewer options. So the working class will want the policy to move toward A and have more options for themselves, whereas the capitalist class wants C so they can make sure that they have workers working for them. Uh, that being said, uh, as I've played this a little bit, uh, that this has been a lower priority policy for me in the strategies that I've used 
for each of the different factions. Uh, middle class, it's not going to impact them too much unless they have too many workers for their companies. But if you get to that point, the middle class really wants to build more of their own companies and put their people to work as opposed to working for other businesses. But um, the biggest thing is really making sure that the state does not go into IMF uh, intervention. So all of the uh, different factions will benefit from the state staying solvent. But even if it happens, the, there's not the greater huge effect on each of the factions beyond the fact that all of the policies go to a completely different place than they are to start. So that is fiscal policy. For labor market, this is the level of wages that each of the different factions uh, have to pay to their workers. At the beginning of the game, you start at L2, which is in the middle. And what this looks like is in all the different wage cards, the different cubes are going to be at the middle. This is the minimum wage. If a, 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 a faction wants to pay more than the prevailing wage, the minimum wage, they're allowed to go higher, but they cannot go lower. So the practical impact of that is the capitalist wants to pay less to workers, so they want to pull the policy over to C, and the effect that has is they can lower the wages for the workers to the blue square on the card, okay? So that can happen for every different company that pays for workers. On the flip side, the working class especially wants it at A. Now, the middle class, if they are hiring their themselves and it's only middle class workers, they're not going to see the impact because they're paying themselves. So the labor market isn't really going to impact them one way or another. So the practical uh, impact for them is to use this uh, number two as a negotiating tactic to try to get other factions to do what they want them to do. Now, if the middle class does have a lot of workers in the private sector or the public sector, then they would want a higher wage. So A would be beneficial to them in that position. Or if they only had their workers in their companies and also had a lot of these working class workers working for them and they had to pay a higher wage, they could benefit from the A level as well. So for middle class, it really depends on the circumstances that they're under to try to decide what to do with the labor market. Taxes can be a little bit confusing. So at the beginning of the game, the tax multiplier is at five. And how do we get that number? This number is based on three, four, and five. So let's kind of take this together and see what number three does for that. So first of all, you've got an initial number. So we've got three, and if you move it, it goes to two, and it goes to one if you go all the way to C. So that's your starting point is three, but then you also have a multiplier for the number on four and five. So if you're at A, it's times two. So whatever the number is on four and five, it's multiplied by two. So at the starting point, you've got one at B for healthcare and benefits, one multiplied by two plus three gets us our five, okay? So then what's, what's the difference gonna make? Well, if I move healthcare and benefits over here, now it's two times two, plus three would be seven. If we had the welfare education policy move here, well, now it's two times two is four, plus one times two is six, seven, eight, nine. Then that moves up here. And then if we moved welfare state education here, so two times two is four, plus another four. So four, eight, 9, 10, 11 
So then it would maximize what the taxes are. That is how we determine those numbers. Now, it would change if we moved the tax policy. If we go here, we have our two that we started with. And then the, for four and five, you multiply whatever number is underneath times one. So now it's just one plus two. So our policy in this scenario is going to be taxation of three. Or if we move this over here, two times one plus one times one, two, three, plus the two here, four, five. Okay, so the biggest effect is going to be at this end with the C. Even if we max out the healthcare and the education, tax is going to be one, but then these numbers are multiplied by zero. So the taxes are going to come all the way down to one. For the capitalist player, this is huge to get the taxes as low as they absolutely can because they are going to be impacted greatly by the amount they have to pay. So when I play as a capitalist, policy number three is the first priority for me to try to get as low as I can. For the middle class player, they can consider whether they want to support the capitalist player and having lower taxes, that does benefit them as well. The caution is if we have a scenario like this where we have free benefits and low taxes, the state is going to bleed money quickly and not recoup it as they have to um, pay their workers to produce and then give away the goods for free. So we're asking for IMF intervention here, which all parties need to consider. But the capitalist player especially wants to get taxes down. Now, the uh, working class does want the higher taxes to keep the treasury solvent and maybe pay a little bit less on their, um, their own taxes. But the uh, because uh, it balances out where uh, it's either going to be the same or sometimes they have a little bit less even with A. But uh, what I've found is for the working class player, I am not going to try to spend all my effort and influence trying to stop a taxation move. Instead, I'm going to focus on what's going on with two, four, and five. Middle class, again, they want lower taxes as well, but uh, if it doesn't necessarily benefit them to have the lower taxes, they can consider whether the table is set where if they slow down the capitalist player, it can make it so they can gain on them. If the capitalist player is winning, the, um, the middle class can try to uh, take advantage of that situation and keep the taxes a little bit higher and vote with the other side. Again, always the middle class, it's very circumstantial what they're going to do. For healthcare and benefits, uh, what we see here is this is the price that is paid by the different uh, factions as they buy from the state, particularly the middle class and the working class. And um, as we already discussed before, taxes are going to be affected, but check out the section on taxation to, to deal with that. But if we are at policy C, then the, uh, the different classes are going to have to pay 10 for each of the health care that they buy from the state. And if we are at B, they're going to have to pay five each for the health care. And then if they are at A, they have to pay zero. So it's free. They can take what they need to upgrade their, um, th their workers and get an extra one. So with healthcare, uh, you get extra workers whenever you have enough healthcare and are able to use that healthcare. You also get victory points and you're gonna help your prosperity. So it helps them in a lot of ways. So uh, you're increasing the amount of workers you have either from the, for the middle class or for the working class. 
you can increase your prosperity and you increase victory points. So lots of things that can happen there. That being said, if I am focused on increasing the amount of workers that I want only, I'm actually going to consider going an immigration route in a little bit. But if you want the victory points that come out of this, having cheap health care is a good route to go to get that. And if you are the capitalist class, you want to keep this high because you want the other teams to buy from you. If the price is 10, then you can sell yours for eight and make money from that because um, it's cheaper and they'll have to consider buying from you or they'll have to bleed their money and it will slow the other teams down. So for the capitalists, they're always going to want to keep that over at the 10 side. And in addition to that, if taxation isn't at C, by keeping it at this end, keeping number four, the health care and benefits at the C end, it lowers the taxes for the capitalist player. Welfare state education is very similar to health care and benefits. Uh, the treatment is the same way, but the difference is now we're talking about education instead of health care. So the, the treatment of taxation is the same. The treatment of how much it costs is the same, where if it's at 10, uh, the middle class and working class need to pay 10 for each uh, of the education that they purchase from the state. And then it's five at B and at A, it is free. And the, uh, the capitalist class is going to want to keep this at the C end. So their education at eight is cheaper to make the other teams try to consider purchasing from them. But number five is it, when I am playing as the working class in particular, this is the one that I want to focus on. I'm going to focus on two of them the most when I am playing working class. I don't know if other people would do it differently. I'm focusing on five and two because for five, what you're doing is you are allowing yourself a situation where you can upgrade your workers, which allows more people to work. The working class has a lot of unskilled workers that you'll have available to you for throughout the game. And by upgrading workers, you can go work for more companies, which is one benefit. And the second major benefit is you set yourself up to get your trade unions faster, which trade unions, the sooner you're able to get them and the more of them you get will make a huge difference both in your victory points and you'll get extra influence for free once the trade unions are available. So those are both really, really beneficial things and having the education at A, if you're able to, or at least B, by making the education cheaper and upgrading your workers, you're going to have huge benefits for yourself. So if I'm the working class, I am trying to get education to A as soon as I can. A capitalist wants it at C, uh, but uh, since the capitalist is focusing more on three, perhaps the working class will be able to have an easier time pulling the uh, education across the board. Middle class can benefit from the education as well, but the difference is middle class, they get more skilled workers throughout the game. So it's not going to make as much of a difference for them. If anything, by being able to buy the education cheaper, they could hinder the ability of the working class to get that education uh, if it's not available to them. Okay, so uh, number five is definitely something that the working class wants to focus on getting to A. Um, the capitalist class wants it at C, but will have a lower priority than number three and, um, and probably number two as well. Those would be the two big ones for the capitalist. Middle class, they're going to respond to whatever the situation is and decide whether they want to upgrade their guys or where, whether they want to try to slow down the working class or whether they just want to be neutral in the matter. Number six, foreign trade has a couple of things that it is going to deal with. 
first thing that it's gonna deal with is the prices for imports. So when we're looking at the imports, the bottom number is how much the uh, luxury and the food cost, but there are also going to be tariffs placed on that uh, resource, on that good. So at the beginning of the game, when you're at B, you'll notice L2 is where that tariff is, which is gonna be an extra five that you have to pay for the food and an extra three for the cell phones, the luxury. If you increase that number, it's going to increase that tariff to a higher number, and that is going to benefit the capitalist player because now food will cost 10 plus 10 is 20, and the cell phones will cost 6 plus 6 is 12. Well, now the capitalist, their food will be cheaper, as will be their luxury, so that is going to be an option that will be more attractive for the capitalist player. The uh, middle class player... They're going to be people who need to decide whether they are going to benefit more from being able to buy these goods cheaper where there's no tariff. So if they get it down to 10, if they need food for 10 and they aren't self-sufficient, maybe getting it from imports is helpful for them. Same, same deal with the cell phones, the luxury. If they can get them for six, is that a benefit to them? Or if they have an excess of either of these resources, maybe they also want them to be at the top level as well so they can sell them for a bigger profit uh, to the working class. So the levels of the policy are going to be dependent on that. B is the middle one. A moves the price higher. Well, the price stays the same but moves the tariff higher. And then C is going to lower that tariff so there isn't one at all. So you always pay the base price on the bottom, but the different levels are how much additional money you have to pay to import these different goods. Working class always wants this down to C because they want this to be cheaper for them. So the second piece then is the amount of business deals. The business deals portion is over on the side of the board. And at A, even though the capitalist benefits from the import prices, and that should be the higher priority for them, the consequence for them is they can't make business deals, and that goes away. If they're at B, they can have one business deal on the table. And then if they have it at C, there will be two options for business deals on the table. Now you might note that the business deals have tariffs on the bottom, and let me explain what happens with those. So if it is at C, there is no tariff, so that's why there's no C on there and you would not pay any tariff. B has the smaller tariff, so you would pay that number in addition to whatever you receive from your business deal. Now the reason there's A here is if the policy goes to A, you do not immediately take off the cards. Instead, that will change in the preparation phase. So in that case, you're going to have a higher tariff that is paid. Now for both of the business deal and import, both of these foreign trade policies, these tariffs that are put into place, well, a tariff is put into place by the state. So in both cases, you pay these additional numbers to the state treasury so that they make money from that. So that is something else to factor in if you have higher numbers and the uh, dif different factions end up making business deals or importing goods, that number goes to the state treasury. I'll get rid of this from earlier. So that will go to the state treasury, so the state makes a little bit more money if you are at A or B from foreign trade. Finally, we have immigration. Now for immigration, this is how many additional workers you have from the, uh, the, from the supply uh, in a round at the preparation phase. Uh, you, you automatically have two for both the middle class and the working class. So the working class gets two unemployed workers and the middle class automatically gets one um, skilled worker of their choice as well as an unemployed worker but then you additionally are going to draw cards for whatever the policy is so if it's at b 
you draw one additional card and whatever worker is there, that is the one you add to the supply. If it's at A, you don't get any additional workers, so you only get two workers. And then if you are at C, you get two cards that you draw and those workers are the ones that you add to the unemployment area. So again, there will be two workers automatically for each of the factions, two unskilled workers for working class, a skilled worker of the middle class's choice, as well as an unskilled worker for the middle class. And then this policy tells you how many additional workers you can have. Now, capitalist class wants it C. They want more workers available to work in their businesses. The middle class, they might want to have fewer workers. From my experience so far, I want to keep the amount of workers I have consistent with the amount of companies I have. So if I have more companies and fewer workers available, I'll want to have more workers, but I don't want to flood the unemployment market with workers because... I have to pay for prosperity and middle class really benefits from upgrading their prosperity because they have a lot of goods that they can get when they have their own companies. So middle class probably wants to keep that at zero unless they have businesses to put those workers into. The working class, if they're trying to get extra workers in conjunction with what I was talking about earlier, if they prioritize five and get a lot of um, skilled workers, then having extra workers can be beneficial to them because they'll make a lot of money if they get those workers working. On the other hand, if the working class does not have those skilled workers available and the businesses to put them in, then having extra workers isn't as uh, functional for them because they, like the middle class, have to pay for goods to get prosperity and prosperity is a way that the middle class and working class can grow quickly in terms of their points. So for working class, it is also dependent on how many uh, skilled workers they have available and how many businesses can house their workers. If they are able to get a lot of workers working, then this can be a very good thing for them to have at sea. But if it's not, then they would be better off uh, keeping the amount of workers lower. So again, prioritizing five allows them to have that opened up, getting more education and getting more workers gets them a lot of money and a lot of um, goods produced that they can use to upgrade prosperity. So that's the policy table. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or any corrections. I hope I got everything correct there, but I am definitely open to feedback. I wanna make sure that I have this as good as I can get it to help uh, everyone else understand what they're doing and play this game as well because it is an absolute uh, gem of a game. It's a good time and really enjoyable. So I hope you found this beneficial. Uh, I've got other hegemony content and uh, other uh, board games that I'm making videos about. So if you're interested in any of that, like and subscribe. Otherwise, have a wonderful afternoon.